there. Uh, this video is brought to you by uh, Patreon. I want to say big, big Patreon friends out there. I love y'all, especially uh, Christian Jepsen. Happy birthday to you. Uh, and you smell like one too. Um, we're going to talk about this in a second. It's terrible. But it's members like you that make these videos happen out on Patreon. And if I can get some more of those, I would that would just make me so happy and make it so I don't have to have, put lots of ads and stuff on the channel. So if you can go over to Patreon.com slash Timmy Joe and donate a few bucks a month, uh, I might even sing uh, your name in a, you know, Christian Jim Jepson, I love you. Thanks, buddy. Uh, but I'm also going to be updating like what I'm doing behind the scenes a lot more. Like I'm hoping like daily up on Patreon, so you get a little inside peek into what I'm doing here. So if you could spare the money, that would be cool. But for now, let's get to this terrible CPU review. Cue the intro, Timmy Joe. <gasps> Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! Right. You gotta be pumped on that, right, Will? Computer parts. Woo! Oh yeah. What's up, people? My name's Timmy Joe. I make videos about these computers, these ones specifically, up on the series of tubes. And today, uh, oh, oh man, I'm in a, I'm a pickle, a dilly of a pickle, because uh, I bought a really terrible processor. And you know what? It's, it's hard to say that in today's day and age. I mean, it's not terrible, like in theory. Well, no, in theory, it's definitely terrible. It, if it was the only thing you could buy to game with, sure, you know, it, it does its job, but it is such a terrible fucking value, such a bull bullshit that I'm, I'm sad. So let's get this out of the way. First off, what prompted me to do all this was I was sent this uh, Z390 motherboard from Gigabyte. Big thanks to Gigabyte for sending me stuff. I uh, like to review motherboards. I like to review things and stuff. We'll see some stuff on this later, but essentially I needed a processor to uh, to review this. I guess we'll just put it away. It's the uh, three, Z390 Aorus uh, Pro Wi-Fi, which is like not even, it's like the third best, if maybe even fourth best uh, Z390 motherboard you can buy. So it's not even like nothing too special, but the, the VRMs on them are actually all really good. They're 12 phase and... Uh, all those E390 gigabytes, I think. So you can't go wrong with any of them. They all kind of share features and stuff. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about this thing. The Z390 motherboard made me want to buy a 9th gen CPU. Well, we can't buy those, can we? Well, at least not after they sold out within like 10 minutes on day one. And I don't think it's because a whole whack of people were buying them. I'm pretty sure it's because they... It didn't have any stock anywhere. Like maybe Newegg got like 50, you know, 9,900Ks and maybe like 70, uh, 9,700Ks. And a whole lot of these because this is absolutely a carryover. I don't even see that the temperatures are that great on it compared to the 8,600K, which I already, uh, you know, looked at and reviewed and said it wasn't such a bad deal. So we're going to go over why this, just do not buy it. It's a stupid, stupid processor. And we're going to talk about it right now. So, poof. Uh, we'll just run Cinebench here. And we'll talk about my overclocking experience. You guys come here to see things overclocked to the Dickens. We're going to hear this thing ramp right up for a second here. Uh, I'm running a 280 mil rad, okay, with a push-pull configuration with one four, two, four 140 millimeter fans. On, uh, it's the Gamer Storm uh, Awesome uh, Castle AIO. It's one of the best I've ever tested, and that's why it's on my test bench. I can only get this thing to 5.1 gigahertz. Okay? Now you might say, hey, over 5? That's awesome, Timmy Joe. But I've tested the 8600K, and it did better. Here's what I mean, okay? So I got 1221 in Cinebench. Now I'm running hardware monitor and whatever, but no matter what I did, I could not increase the clock speed beyond 5.1 gigahertz. Now I have some friends, talk to them that actually bought this same processor and they were able to do 5.2 gigahertz. So I just essentially lost the silicon lottery. But I'll tell you why I have a real big problem with that in just a second. So we'll move over to here. We'll go down here. Here's me uh, about, you know, we'll say, what, maybe eight months ago, six months ago? Eight months ago. I would delive this if this was my personal CPU because it would probably do 5.3, no problem, 
But uh, we... So I said that, which makes me laugh because it's essentially this new generation has been delitted for me with some solder. And yeah, with the 9900K, maybe that solder isn't, you know, as good as liquid metal. But you think with a new generation, you would have been these CPUs. Sorry. The 1.43 volts, pretty high. One point, I tried 1.45, 1.48. Uh, very, very good. 1288. So I cannot even get the performance of the last gen chip that I got. Now, sure, maybe I win the silicon lottery and I get to 5.3 gigahertz on this. But I kind of thought that this generation would have been a given for something like that as long as he used extreme cooling. I have fairly extreme cooling on here, a 280 mil rad, okay, with four 140 mil fans push pull and a really awesome pump. Uh, I've had no problems with this thing maxing chips out and the temperatures aren't even a concern because when I do boot at 5.2 gigahertz at like 1.45 volts, the minute I run Cinebench, it goes up to about 70 degrees before it crashes out or Cinebench crashes, which tells me the thermals are not the issue. So I got a better score on the last gen chip and yes, we could chalk that up to Silicon Lottery, but I figured that the lottery would have been won for me since I'm paying a little bit more money for an i9 CPU that has been soldered. Okay, let's move on. So, how much did I pay for this? Well, uh, at, the, at the time, I, I, I sold my, uh, some stuff to be able to pay for a 9900K. And I'm saving my, my pennies. But since it was obvious it wasn't going to happen anytime soon... Uh, I wanted to review this motherboard, do some relevant content, so that's why I bought this chip. I paid uh, way too much money for it, like $330 Canadian. So that's uh, it's, it's $280 American, basically. Okay, let's put this into perspective. So uh, on the, I also want to say that the day after I bought the chip and it was being shipped, the 8700 or the sorry 9700K came on sale in Canada. So had I waited one more day, and I'd been waiting for two weeks, I could have got the 8-core CPU. But no. Now I could have bought an 8700K and been a lot more happy. But the whole idea is that this 6-core is new, and we're reviewing new stuff. It's just... Uh. So there's me reviewing the 2600, not the 2600X, with a fairly decent motherboard, an AB, uh, uh, a 450 motherboard, though. So... Here's the Ryzen alternative. So she's running Cinebench right now at 4.3 gigahertz. Oh my goodness. 4.3 gigahertz. So we maxed it out. 1473. So we're well over 200 more points in Cinebench. How much does that platform cost, you ask? For better performance, multi-threaded, technically should be better in, you know, video rendering and stuff like that because it's got 12 threads. This has six threads, you know, think about it. So let's move over. 159.99. It's less or more than $100 cheaper. What can you buy with $100? Well, a motherboard. Fairly nice one, actually. Uh, this ROG Strix B450 motherboard for uh, 122. So you could buy a Ryzen 2600 with a cooler. Now, I know it's not the greatest cooler, but it comes with one. You could literally put it on and start using the computer. You could buy the Ryzen 2600, the motherboard. Well, I already marked it all out for you, so let's look. So here is uh, if you want to buy a 370 board, because you need a Z370 motherboard in order to overclock these. What's the point of buying the 8600, or the, yeah, 9600, I should say, K, if you're not going to overclock it. Well, you'd have to get at least this, we'll say the cheapest equivalent would have been this Asus Tough board for $10 more. So the platform costs are getting exponential. And then you have to buy a cooler of some degree. Well, let's, you know, buy a cheap cooler. There's a Gamex uh, 400. That would be, I'd say, equivalent on, you know, the Intel platform to the Wraith Stealth cooler. So what are the platform total costs? Well... It's $159.99 for the Ryzen 2600, $122 for a decent motherboard. The cooler's free, $282.47. And then you move on to the Intel platform, which has some benefits. Yes, it has some gaming benefits, and we're going to get there. 
Uh, but we're, you know, running uh, 279.99. I know it's new, you know, and you can even get that 2600 on sale for cheaper than that. I've, I've personally bought 2600s for 200 Canadian, 2600Xs, I should say, uh, on sale on Newegg. So the, the, this is just general costing here, but 9600 ks 279 plus a motherboard that's $10 more than the Ryzen motherboard, plus you got to buy some form of cooler, your total platform costs of 432 91 and that's not ram and whatever but you're going to be able to buy the same ram and video card for either of each but you're saving a lot of money that will go towards a nicer video card yeah so you're just saying well jamie joe if i get a really good video card i can probably max it out with the 9600k and that's that's 100 percent true okay let's say you had a 1080 ti because that's the numbers i'm going to pull from in a second but um you have a 1080 ti Yes, you're definitely going to get more frames than the Ryzen system with this. But how many more frames, you might ask? Well, I personally don't have that answer that you know from the research I've done. But I always go to me main man Steve over uh, across the pond. Like well, He's probably actually on the other side of the world for me. Uh, but uh, from a, a hardware unboxed. And he's got... The, it all lined up here from the 2600 launch or 2600X. So he actually only overclocked, or sorry, the, yeah. So he only overclocked the um, 2600X to 4.1 gigahertz, which in my experience, you could get at least 100 megahertz more. And we just saw on a 2600, not even the 2600X, you can do 4.3 with a B450 motherboard. That's what that Cinemetch result was from. So you know, you, it's not far, like too much to say that you could get a little bit better performance on this. Now, he's got his uh, Core i5-8600K at 5.2 gigahertz again. So he's even maxing out the Intel chip further than uh, the, the AMD chip in this. And we see here the performance is actually within 10% uh, on average at 1080p. So 10% you get for spending how much more money? Well, $154 more is what you're gonna have to spend minimum to get 10% better gaming performance and not as good multi-threaded performance. I just, it's a no-brainer. It, it's ridiculous. Why, why would you buy this? If you're gonna buy the Intel, you need to go 8700K. That I can understand. It's got the, the uh, you know performance for the multi-threaded and the gaming performance. And then yeah, you could go with the 97 or the 9900K if you're absolutely bonkers. <coughs> but yeah, I, I just, I feel really stupid buying this even if it was for review, even if it was for testing on my channel. and. You know what, I could leave this motherboard and stuff on my test bench, and that way at least, you know, when I get some better video cards, I can always make sure I'm maxing out the performance on it, because, you know, as we saw in, in that other slide there from Steve, uh, there's not much difference between the 8700K and the 8600K, and then, you know, if you get into uh, the, the ninth gen series, th that margin would be even, you know, pr pretty close too. So. I can leave this on my test bench and use it as a tool, sure. But for the average consumer, for future proofness, for everything, you got to know you're not going to be able to put the 10th uh, generation on this motherboard on, on a Z390. You got to know that. But if you buy Ryzen B450, you should be able to put Zen 2 on it. I'm hoping they promised that. They promised it. So let's hope that that's where it's going. But all in all, when it's all, all said and done, Intel makes very little sense, very, very little sense with the Ryzen series of processors being out. And let's say you want to even go lower than this, like the Core i3-80, what, 400? The, 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 the quad core? Like, I, that's got to be the same price as the 2600. I'm just guessing. But it's, it, there's just no reason to buy Intel right now unless you have an RTX 2070, 2080, and you're a gamer and you want a fast refresh rate or whatever or you know you have a 1080 ti i just with a 1080 1070 you'd probably be fine with the ryzen and you'd still have those six extra threads i just i can't come up with a good reason
So, and I wouldn't blame the overclocking issues I had on the motherboard because I know a friend had the same motherboard and he gets a little bit higher overclock. So, in the end, this platform is just befuddles me. It befuddles me. I cannot understand what Intel's thought was pricing these things where they are. It's and then not binning the 9600K. So it gets really like that was my saving grace was this with this. I was hoping to get like 5.5 gigahertz with some huge overclocking scenario, put like the rads back on the table in the ice bucket water. That would have been cool, 5.5 gigahertz. But when I can't even get it to run Cinebench at 70 degrees at 5.2 gigahertz at 1.48 volts, it's it's like the biggest disappointment in a processor I've I've ever seen. All right, I'm done with this video. I don't even know what to say anymore. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. And if you have lots of money and you want a really high-end game, I guess you could go that route. See you guys later. My name's Timmy Joe.